everybody. Much too long, no see. My name is Seth, and today we're going to be talking about what happens when you have Jupiter as your chart ruler. It's for my Sag Ascendants. Well, the chart ruler is the planet that rules your first house. It's kind of just that simple. The difference between um, the chart ruler and the ruler of your second house, the ruler of your third house, the ruler of your fourth, is that the chart ruler is actually giving a strong direction to your life. Um, what's going on with the planet that rules your first house is actually putting a lot of information into where and how you use your ascendant at all. All right. So if you have Jupiter on your ascendant in Sagittarius as your chart ruler. Now with this placement, you actually may come off a lot more Jupiterian than you actually are in your daily life. Uh, people will get a very big Jupiterian energy from you and they will assume that you are just wistful and, and, and full of knowledge and, and a leader. Uh, for them to look up to if they have that that sort of um, thing going on in their chart where they're looking for someone to lead them they will kind of immediately come towards you and be grab and gravitate towards you and be pulled in to that gravitational heavy gravitational pull that you have over people um, it, it gives you a type of charm it gives you a type of charisma that can strongly affect the people around you but once they get to know you once they get a little bit closer to your seventh house once they uh, maybe get to um, used to working with you. Maybe once they start dating you, they start to see that Jupiter is just something that you lead with. It is not something that is really fully encompassed in your everyday world. Now, you may already have a naturally non-committal sort of attitude towards life. Um, maybe not so much you're not committed to people even though you're not really that committed to people. It's more of a Jupiter in the seventh house thing where you're very non-committal with people, where you may have attachments, but those attachments are not physical. They're not bound by space, where you may be very attached to someone and not mind talking to them once a year, seeing them maybe twice a year, and feeling as if you guys are just as close as if you've ever been. Um, when it's Jupiter in the first house, it's just non-committal to even, let's say, being friends to begin with, you're gonna have to kind of put yourself around me constantly to when when you have the space and people are gonna have to kind of constantly put themselves around you, put themselves in your general area, in your uh, immediate environment for you to constantly get used to them and say, oh, okay, you think I'm your friend? All right, I, I accept that. I totally think that's a great thing we should do. And Jupiter will help expand upon that path you will go down once they give you that nudge. But if people are just kind of there unless you really like them or find something admirable about them and, and want them in your life all the time, a lot of people are going to assume they're your friend when they're not. And it's not negative. It's just that, you know, nobody told me I was supposed to be your friend. I didn't assume we were supposed to put labels on each other and commit to something right now. Like, you know what I mean? I just, I never knew that I know. Sure. Let's be friends. Let's talk all the time. But you know, if you don't tell me, I won't know. And you'll also, through this, you'll also learn to choose your friends wisely because you will have more of an energy to just kind of say yes and not find danger until you find it, not believe danger is there until somebody gives you a reason to believe danger is there. Um, and then once you do, you will want to totally avoid it. So it becomes a little tricky because you're going to want to learn to choose your friends wisely and you will still make the same sort of mistakes. You will still have to make mistakes in life, except that as well. But um, just understand that you will learn much faster when you're making those mistakes. You might not immediately pick up on the fact that you're making the same mistake again, but it doesn't take a month to realize this is the wrong person to keep around you like it did last time. This time it'll only take a week. But if it's taking a moment, if it's taking a day, then you're probably moving a little too fast. You're probably getting a little nervous and getting a little hesitant and trying to avoid this thing much too much and letting a lot of Scorpio energy uh, create a lot of phobias for you, which... It, it, it can create a lot of phobias for you, that Scorpio placement. And um, I might end up mentioning that throughout this whole video. So um, yeah, Jupiter in the first house. You're going to be, you're going to have a great gravitational pull towards people. You're going to be non-committal until someone gives you a reason to commit. And then when they do, if it seems positive to you, you are totally willing and totally down to do that. Because you are very gracious, you are very giving, you are very accepting. And a lot of people will want to take advantage of that. But um, don't take that too far, learning um, how to be wise with who you pick. Don't turn it into a phobia. When you look at your life path, the influence you're going to have on the world around you, really, that's what the chart ruler is representing, that, that major influence you're going to have on the world, the impact you're going to have. 
you're going to want to look at where Mars is placed in your chart. That's going to help you get an idea of what's going on, what house is Mars sitting in, what sign is Mars sitting in, to get an idea of what's driving you to do what you want to do, what is the real motivation behind um, your your extravagance, your your um, maybe greediness, your, your ability to love, forgive, and accept. What is motivating all these things? What is it all driving you towards? Mars will help answer that. You're going to look at... Aries being in your fifth house and that definitely helps get the idea that your influence has to do with fun and your ability to find it and your ability to to gravitate towards it and expand upon it every time you find it and with that midheaven of yours you really tend to go into a situation find something that's fun and by the time you're done it's monetarily uh, gratifying it's something that's either worth money or it's something that's gonna make you money or it's something that might make someone else money but you have a really good way of monetizing fun. Something that you find fun for you always just tends to become something monetized. This means that you have a much greater hand in the grandiose of your life than you think. You may think that things are just kind of happening by happenstance and you're kind of forgetting that you are implementing a lot of, of, of energy and you are implementing a lot of force and a lot of direction on what's going on with the things that get built and the things that blow up in your life for negative or positive but we're looking at positive right now for Jupiter in the second house in Capricorn as your chart ruler this is really touching on the fact that your luck your prosperity this expansion that Jupiter promises um, it will need to be earned It'll be something that you will need to work towards. It'll take uh, dedication. It'll take some work. It will take faith in, in your work, especially with this sitting in your second house, having faith in what you're building, having faith in what you can manifest in this world and leading with that faith, believing in yourself, believing in whatever it is that you invest in, trusting your gut on what it is that you need to invest in and what it is that you think is is prosperous. Um, and once you do that, and once you dedicate yourself, and once you fully move with trust and fully move towards things um, with full intentions of, of growing in, whatever, in whichever way you want to put it, because the second house is more than just money. It, it, it is personal uh, value as well, like your value of yourself. Whatever way you want to grow, as long as you move faith, move with a, with a structure, with a faith, with a set of morals that you believe in, and, and build towards that expansion, it will happen. And it will happen much grander than you imagined. It will happen much faster than you thought. But you're going to need to commit and you're going to need to earn it. Now, when you do commit just a little bit, you will see that you kind of attract people who are willing to put some manpower behind what it is that you want to do. You're going to find that, that again, Jupiter's heavy gravitational pull draws in people who can do things for you, who might want you to do things for them. There is a give and take here. Jupiter brings in the people who are hungry as well as the people who are willing to feed you. So you're going to have to be able to pick and choose between them and understand who's who and who you're going to feed and who you're not and who you're going to let feed you and who you're not because you're going to need to do both if you're going to want to expand on this in a positive way. So really make sure that you look into that. Make sure that you ground what it is that you're focused on. If it is monetary, make sure that you ground the base of what it is that you want to do or the base of what, why you want to earn this money. And then decide with your gut instinct, what is the best path for me to earn this money? Or what is the best path for me to get in touch with who I am? What is the best path for me to find self-respect and self-value? Find that path. Decide what that path is. Maybe you need to adventure a little. Maybe you need to be Jupiterian, travel around, but travel around with a purpose, a purpose to find what it is that you need to jumpstart what it is that you want. And that will help jumpstart your Jupiter placement. This ties in heavily with your influence on the world, the impact that you're going to end up having on the world with a, with a chart ruler placement like this. Now, you're going to want to look at where Venus is placed to get some more specificity on what's going on, what it is that you might be focused on. Are you more focused on self-respect, self-value? Are you more focused on something more monetary? Are you more focused on something in between? Is it more other-focused? Is it more you-focused? Venus will help you kind of get an idea of where you're going with that. And then you see Taurus sitting in your sixth house, and you see it's the monotonous. It's the idea of you taking your time, doing this right, making sure that you understand what your system is, laying the foundation of what it is that you want and what it is that you want to get and what it is that you want to grow. Laying the foundation is your impact on the world. You do it beautifully and you lay the foundation much wider 
than anyone would suspect and much wider than you would ever expect and you can build much bigger than than what your mind is even dreaming up now so just imagine how big you want things and how big they could possibly be when you focus and hone in on the monotonous on on the minutia on on getting the details ironed out for the foundation first and then building your way up slowly but surely and understanding that naturally it will pick up speed and naturally you will be able to keep up because of that now your purpose and your impact actually has a lot to do with giving a lot of other people purpose your ability to lay this foundation gives a lot of people career purpose you can end up giving people and leading people towards careers and goals that are practical and focused for them. And you could end up giving a lot of people just a lot of great focus when it comes to the things that you are focused on and giving them a purpose when it comes to helping you out and when it comes to what it is that you're giving them through, uh, whatever it is that you're focused on. Because like I said, there will be a give and take. There are people you're going to need to feed as well as the people who are going to try to feed you. Now with Jupiter as your chart ruler sitting in your third house in Aquarius. With Jupiter placed here, you get to see how powerful your ideas are by spreading them, by working out the details with others, by getting that idea out. Of course, it's the first step. And it's that fantastic first step that actually opens a lot of doors for you to just be able to speak on what it is that you want. Speak on it confidently. Tell people what it is that you have plans for. Don't be afraid and think someone's going to steal it. Don't be afraid and think people are going to laugh at you. Don't be afraid and think all these negative things are going to happen. Because you know what? They will. If it's good, people are going to want to copy you. If it's really that good, people are going to want to shut you down just as much as people are going to want to empower you and, and really help make it more original so other people can't copy. There are going to be the negatives and the positives. But what you're focused on and what you're putting out into the world through your ideas, through your communication, will be what Jupiter expands upon. Now, there's an idea with Aquarius, the ability to give help but ask for help equally. Aquarius knows this and, and understands this exchange and understands how deep-rooted that exchange is on the human psyche, on the human soul. And you can as well, engaging in that. Understanding that Jupiter has a heavy gravitational pull on people. And you're going to bring a lot of people in who are hungry, and you're going to bring a lot of people in who are willing to feed you. And this is going to surround around your ideas, what it is that you decide your purpose is. And with a placement like this, you definitely do get to decide what your purpose is. You probably have way more than one. But the ones that you communicate, the ones that you market the hardest, the ones that you really make sure people hear about and get excited about will be the ones that attract the people who are willing to feed that idea and people who are hungry to get fed by that idea. And you're going to need to accept both of those people. It's healthy and it creates community. But you're going to need to be able to choose who those people are, who's healthy for you in this situation, who are the healthy people that you're willing to feed, and who are the healthy people that you're willing to take food from. Food. <laughs> and, and, and be willing to accept that and work with that and keep promoting your ideas in, in the best way that you see fit. These people are going to be eager. They're going to be lit up. They're going to be extremely excited. But the key here is that they're going to be. You need to be the activator. You need to give them something to be excited about. You're going to need to give them something to be eager about. You need to let them know dinner's on the table or let them know that you're hungry. All of it, really, not or. All of it. You're going to need to do all of that. And you're going to need to make sure that your ideas are powerfully promoted. That's what this placement's all about. Jupiter will expand upon that and expand your reach and expand your voice much farther than you could ever imagine. Now, when it comes to your impact, your influence on this world, as the chart ruler uh, shows, um, they're going to want to look at Mercury. You're going to want to look at where Mercury's placed, but how it's in, what sign it's in, and really get an idea of what your ideas are, are, are surrounding around. What is it that you're most interested in? What is it that you're most interested in communicating about? Jupiter will help expand upon that. Mercury will help give you a better idea of what that's about. Is it about you? Is it about others? Is it about community? Is it about uh, spiritual health? Is it about um, emotional health? Is it about psychological health? Is it about health at all? Is it about food? Is it about trains? <laughs> what is it? What is it that you're most interested in? Mercury will help you get an idea of how to express that and what's going to get your passion truly really driving to light up Jupiter, to keep telling people about it, keep giving your message out as Mercury allows us to do. And Jupiter will expand upon that as it is allowing you to do. With Gemini sitting in your seventh house, you get to see just how damn powerful 
relationships are for you. Let that be acquaintances. Let that be strangers who just hear about it. Let that be best friends, girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, husbands, parents, parents-in-laws, cousins, all of them. All relations that you have. Anybody who gets to hear what it is that you're passionate about, gets to hear your dream, gets to hear your well-thought-out, well-marketed um, well, uh, plan. You're going to need to bounce ideas off the people that you trust first and make sure that they spread those ideas. And really, they're going to want to if you are passionate enough about this, if you are doing the work to work things out and, and take in what people are saying and really work with that. Don't get so fixed, so Aquarius fixed that your ideas are, you feel as if your ideas are the only good ideas because you won't get anywhere that way. Can't spread ideas if, if everyone's just repeating the same thing. You're going to need to let some flux in there. You're going to need to let people put their own spin on it. And, and you're going to need to be the one who people are gravitated to to get to hear things from the source, to understand what the steps are for what it is that they heard from somebody else, through somebody else, through somebody else, and acquaint everyone. Yet again, now that you have a huge audience, acquaint them with what it is that you're focused on and what it is now we are all focused on. And that will generate uh, an amazing influence over people, an amazing influence over the world especially when you focus and home in on what part of the world you are most interested in influencing. With Jupiter in the fourth house in Pisces as your chart ruler. Now, this is a great placement because it shows that you really don't have to look far to find luck, to find some type of prosperity, to kind of ease your way, relax your way into something that can turn out great. It does not mean don't move. It does not mean do not swim. Because that's the big thing I always tell people with strong Pisces energy, any type of Pisces placements, remember to swim, remember to move, remember the two fishes. No matter if you're swimming in different directions, no matter if you want to keep changing directions, just keep making sure that you move or else you will stop being able to live. It's more like a shark. You will die. You need to move. Because when you don't, you get stagnant and you get worrisome and you start blasting yourself into different extremes. Jupiter will expand upon this. So make sure you are always moving. Now, in this idea of movement, movement, it does mean physically, it does mean mentally, it does mean spiritually, it does mean emotionally. It, it, it means making sure that you are keeping a change, you're keeping the current moving. Think of what it is that motivates you what it is that makes you happy what it is that makes you feel comfortable think of those things as needing to be churned constantly make sure you're discovering new things about them make sure you're bringing them into new places make sure you're going out and trying to find them in new places just never become stagnant in any part of your life with this placement especially at home don't let yourself become stagnant don't let comfort equate to contentment they're not the same but there is a little bit to watch out for because, again, Jupiter is an expansive energy, so it's a little dangerous. Things that are negative get expanded. Things that are positive get expanded. And when you do churn the waters, especially if it's a big churning of the waters, if you need something big, if you let yourself sit for too long and you need a big push, the waters are going to need to become turbulent. Things are going to need to get a little chaotic for a little bit for things to now reorient themselves in the direction that you are now facing. And you're always in control. But remember with a placement like this, you're, you're dealing with a big, heavy energy like Jupiter, churning what it is that you are comfortable with in your home environment, what it is that makes you feel like you can breathe, <laughs> that makes you feel like you are grounded somewhere in this universe. Those things are going to need to churn every time. And those things can flow f easily, can flow calmly. But when you decide to change the direction, especially if it's quick, especially if it's dramatic, Things will get chaotic because Jupiter will expand on the confusion. Jupiter will expand on the excitement. Jupiter will expand on the fact that you were once going this way, now you're going that way. And those waters need to mix before they now go in the direction and start moving slowly, start flowing uh, smoothly again. Where you take up roots, and this can be more than the home that you grew up in. You're going to want to get out of the home that you grew up in. But don't go around the world looking for the home that you grew up in. You're going to need to experience what love means to someone else somewhere new. You're going to need to experience what hate means somewhere else to somewhere, somewhere new. Be open. Be willing to listen. To be willing to accept information. Be able to accept people's different viewpoints. And, and maybe take on a little bit. Exorbit. Wear it for a little bit. 
feel it, feel it out, see if you like it, see what parts of it you like and the parts of it that you don't like, and then take it as an experience and let the rest go. The things that you do like, if you love those things, hold them tight and take them with you to your next adventure. But um, don't, don't settle in anywhere. Keep exposing yourself to new things. Keep exposing yourself to new definitions of the things that you love. Don't get content with what it is that you're used to. And don't go looking for what it is that you're used to in, in all the different places. Because you'll just keep finding the same. And eventually that will bore you and you won't understand what's boring you. Again, this is a little bit of a turbulent thing because especially with Pisces energy, Pi uh, Jupiter is a heavy gravitational energy and you will, gr you will bring in situations, you will bring in emotions, you will bring in people and their problems that will either need to be fed or are looking to feed you. Negative people, negative situations, negative environments, they want to feed you too. And Pisces has a hard time not accepting things. Pisces has a hard time separating what's negative and what's positive, what's mine and what's yours, when there's a lot of things. So be very clear about what it is that you love and what it is that you don't. Those will help you create boundaries in a sense, which again, Jupiter and Pisces is not going to be very good at that. But knowing what it is that you love Knowing it, what it is that you hate will create two extremes for you to judge a situation and decide, am I going to go this way? Am I going to go that way? Am I going to move towards what's positive? Am I going to move forward to what's negative? Is this, give, is, is this feeling that I'm getting? Are these people that I'm accepting? Is the situation that I'm in? Is this closer to the things that I hate or closer to the things that I love? A lot of the times things are not right in the middle. And if they are towards the things that you hate, then you're going to meet, need to make a sacrifice. And if they are towards the things that you love, you're probably still going to need to make a sacrifice. It's Pisces we're talking about. But knowing what's worth a sacrifice and what's not. If it's not worth a sacrifice, that means let go of it. That is the sacrifice, letting go of that negative situation. And it is worth the sacrifice and it's more towards what you love, then that means let go of your preconceived notions, let go of what you thought before, and start accepting something that feels positive to you, that feels good to you, and not talking yourself into something that is iffy. There's nothing in between with Pisces. There is no middle line. If it feels negative, it is. If it feels positive, it is. You're going to need to separate the two and understand what side is it on because it is on one side or the other. Now your influence on the world, your impact on the world, what Jupiter as your chart ruler is really representing. You're going to want to look at the moon. You're going to want to look at the moon because the moon will really help you understand what is it that I love and what is it that I hate. The moon is your radar. It is, it is your idea of, of understanding the subconscious as you interact with the world around you. Pisces is the subconscious. You got Jupiter sitting in the subconscious. And you have the moon telling you what it is you like and what it is you don't like. Let's say you have a fiery moon. You're not going to want situations that make you feel like you're little. You're not going to want situations that make you feel like you cannot move, that you cannot express yourself, that you cannot have an opinion that may differ from a lot of the people around you. That might be your definition of something that you hate, something that's negative for you. And if you have um, a water moon, that might not be your definition. Not being able to, to um, aggravate people, to not be able to upset people might be exactly what you want. What you're focused on might not be being able to say your opinion because it is different from someone else's, you might want to be able to find the, the, the melding. You know what, let's forget about what, what we don't agree on and let's focus on what we do agree on. That's more of a watery sort of thing. That's more of an earthy sort of thing. That's more of a more feminine energy. So let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on that. More of the masculine is, no, I need to express what it is that I believe in because it differs from yours. And that's more of a masculine energy and the moon will help you decipher what's negative and what's positive depending on certain factors like that not only masculine and feminine but things of along that line the moon will help you decipher personally for you what's negative what's positive when you find cancer sitting in your eighth house you get to understand that building boundaries finding ways to create boundaries even if they're not fully there even if they're not the type of airy intellectual boundaries or fiery um expressive boundaries or the um earthy physical boundaries 
your boundaries are going to need to be there and your boundaries are going to need to be in sync with who you are and what makes you comfortable. And, and Cancer emphasizes that sitting on your eighth house and your ability to do so shows that you can lead people. You can find your kin. You can find the people that understand you, that understand what you're trying to do. You can find people where you can become a, a sponge for them and soak in positive energy. And when you get home and, and ring yourself out, you're ringing out positive energy energy and you can be the type of person that just radiates and helps accumulate and helps spread the positive energy uh, positive energy necessary in our world for us as humans to survive and not fucking kill each other you're going to be a big huge beacon for that when you can learn to navigate the world by what makes you comfortable by what makes you feel good and keep leaning towards those things and seeing how what makes you feel good is expanded upon and makes someone else feel good every person that you touch will feel that every person that you envelop in your world will feel that and you will spread a lot of goodness around a lot farther than you ever really thought possibly <laughs> so with jupiter in your fifth house in aries as your chart ruler now jupiter sitting in this placement really creates a love for risk um, if you don't have a love for risk, then trust me, you are suppressing it and you're going to need to start to learn where your love for risk is because that risk is to your benefit. Being able to find situations where things are a little risky, where you're going to need to prove yourself, step up, and if you lose, there's something to lose, is going to bring out the best in you. It's going to bring out the part of you that's latent, that Jupiter is sort of ruling over and, and, it, and it's something that needs to be touched on the nerve needs to be touched the the car needs to be let out of the garage every once in a while you need to rev up that engine and move it around risk is important and it's an important part of your life and it will become a very good part of your life if you remember that it is a car that needs to be revved up and driven around once in a while <laughs> if you live um anywhere where there's snow then you know it's that car that you only bring out in the summer and it sits, you know, throughout the other parts of the shitty climate. Um, it's not something that you're going to need to drive in, speed around every single day, because then you will find yourself in trouble. You're going to catch tickets. You might crash a few times. You might hurt someone else outside of yourself. This car anal analogy goes both ways. So remember that, that a car is a responsibility, and this is a responsibility, and taking risk is a responsibility but is it a responsibility that you've been blessed with with this placement because that responsibility when taken seriously will allow you to gain from risk it will allow you to enjoy risk the way other people cannot because you gain a lot and you have the ability to lose a lot and you you have the ability with jupiter's heavy gravitational energy to pull in people who are hungry for you to win a lot and who are willing to give you a lot so just in case you fail or when you lose and, and you lose a lot, there are people that are going to be coming in that you're going to attract who are going to be ready and willing to feed you, give you more, fuel up that car for you. And they're going to be people who want rides. That is something that's going to need to be accepted in your life. But you're going to need to be tactful and wary and maybe not so risky with the people that you let in. This, this heavy energy, bring them in, but you're always the one behind the wheel. Remember that. If people want to get behind the wheel for you, those are the people you need to kick out of the car. And don't let them drive, because that is a risk you do not need to take. You need to stay behind the wheel. Jupiter will support this. Jupiter will push for that. But when you let others behind the wheel, Jupiter will expand upon how damn risky you are making it, because you're putting your life in someone else's hands, and that's a bigger risk than necessary. Now, um... I've kind of locked myself into this car analogy, <laughs> but to get outside of it a little bit, you need to create your own luck. Again, you are blessed with this responsibility. That means you're going to need to create it. You're going to have to go out there and gamble a little bit. And when it comes to the, the major influence that you have on the world, when it comes to that impact that, that Jupiter as your chart ruler is going to give you to have on the world, is going to be able to be specified with the sun placement. The sun placement will tell you where your ego is brightest, where you're most willing to take a few risks. Like, you know what? Your ego is what needs to be at risk the most because you can't take it with you when you're gone, so you might as well play with it now while you got it. And that ego 
will help give you an idea of what is it that you want to play risk with is it actually money if, it, if it's something like an earth sign is it something more intellectual is it an idea of putting your ideas out there planning something with someone else still having keeping your hands strong on the wheel but being able to take people places that they've never been for is that something risky for you and 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 Understanding where your son is placed and the house is placed in as well as as well as the sign and other factors as well Just looking at your son will give you an idea of what risk means and what chips you're playing with really there we go um, And what kind of car you're driving? <laughs> We're gonna stay in that car analogy Does someone tell you what kind of car you're driving and what it's best made for and when it needs to stay in the garage And when they take it out now you find Leo sitting in the ninth house and you get to see that it's all experiential that what your impact is going to come from your ability to gain some experiences and then be um, wise and wizened and, and broken down by the time you're old because you know what I did it I seen it all I lived it all and 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 you're you might just be way more effervescent and way more more um, um, able to move and interact and, and, and celebrate life than other people who are the same age as you especially when you do get old if you keep building up these experiences that reinvigorate you that reinvigorate your energy and keep you young and keep you living and keep that car running smooth moderate risk I guess I should say I don't want to keep pushing that risk word moderate risk I guess because people who are who see this in you who see how reinvigorated you are that's gonna attract the people that want to feed you now there are gonna need to be people that need to be fed as well you're gonna need to feed other people as well that's just a part of life that's give and take now to feed those people means to be a leader to inspire them get them to move get them to take charge of their own lives take their own car for a spin don't try to drive mine don't rely on me for rides I know where your car is let me help you find it I know how what roads to take let me show you I know what roads I've already taken let me give you a map being able to be that leader being able to be the person that inspires to be the person that's done it first that laid down the groundwork that blazed a trail that's an amazing place for you to be, and you will get to see how amazing that is if you embrace this energy the way Jupiter, um, the best way Jupiter can be embraced with this energy as your chart ruler. With Jupiter in Taurus as your chart ruler in the sixth house. What we spoke about a little bit for the second house, the idea of laying foundation, the idea of that foundation can be much more grandiose than you could ever imagine, and you might not even realize how far and wide you've laid that foundation with Jupiter sitting in the second house. Now when it's sitting in the sixth house, you might know pretty damn well how how well you lay foundation. It might be something that comes naturally to you. It might be something uh, of a strength that you've picked up on that you can do and it's come naturally and you motivate um, and you organize your life around your ability to do so, to lay foundation. You may be very proud of your ability to lay foundations in whatever ways that you do so. This could be um, more of an effort for others this could be more of an effort to lay a foundation to support social um interaction within the career this may be laying the foundation to support physical manifestation and production in the career this could be laying the foundation for comfort and and um comfortable work environments within the career whatever it is that you are focused on whatever it is that you like to work on things you like to find things that are broken lay a foundation for them to now be fixed to just make it work that's a big thing with Virgo Virgo really likes to just make things work if it's not working make it work improving things should be left up to Capricorn Virgo tends to run in circles when it focuses on improving things and your Jupiter can do the same thing and expand upon that tendency when you have Taurus who is so focused on what it's focused on and a house that might get focused on improving when it shouldn't and Taurus doesn't like to hear what it shouldn't do. It wants to just keep doing what it does. So you don't want Jupiter to expand upon that, that stubbornness in that direction. You want to focus on fixing what's broken. If it doesn't work, fix it. If it does work, why are you paying attention to it? Focus on what doesn't. And this usually means that you're focusing on others because a lot of other people don't work. This doesn't mean ignore yourself because you don't work too. But um, with Jupiter here, Really what's happening is Jupiter's being focused on other. Jupiter's very much about going around and seeing how it can help others. It seems in this in, in this place, what you're doing is not working. It seems as if you're not getting what you could. Production is not hitting the mark that it should. So let's make it work. You are very good at that. That is something that uh, that type of simple approach might be very, very good for you. And being able to apply that simple approach to whatever it is that you want to do as a career, something that can really earn you some good money, 
is very good for you here. To be able to be a fixer, to be able to be the handyman or the handywoman in whatever situation that you're placed in. Doesn't necessarily have to be the handyman or the handywoman, even though that does kind of suit you. It could be something as simple as HR, or as complicated, depending if you actually work in that <laughs> environment. But something like HR, something like being able to help people with financial security, being able to help with all these different sorts of things, something that you are very good at laying the foundation on, something that you know you are very good at, being able to help other people become very good at that, to go from not working to working, to be able to apply that to situations and people and, and businesses can be very, 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 very good for the Jupiter placement that you have, and it can be a very influential part of your life with it being your chart ruler. As it being your chart ruler, pertaining to the influence that you have on the world, the impact that you're gonna make on the world as the chart ruler delineates or shows, um, you're going to want to look at Mercury. You're going to want to look at what you're most interested in. What are you most interested in tinkering with? What is it that you're most interested and in focused on in other people? The first thing that you notice that they're not good at when you communicate with them, when you watch them do what they do. What is that first thing you notice and how can you monetize that? How can you create a simple, gentle, productive, um, practical approach to helping people go from not working where you can most easily and you're most passionate about spotting it to working and that can be something that is simple yet amazingly influential for you you can really start to see yourself being an asset here and really start to see how Jupiter creates your abilities and your strengths and being able to lead with your strengths and being able to pass your strengths down teaching people how to fish so to speak is creating you as an as an asset and the more valuable that you become really comes down to how Jupiter can expand how helpful you are to the world around you. If you're going to turn it into a self-gratifying, selfish, more of a judgmental sort of thing, Jupiter will expand upon that and you will notice people stop liking you very quickly. But if you make it something productive, if you make it something practical, you make it something gentle, the way that you ease in and help and make yourself available to others within the strengths that you know you have, you're going to see how Jupiter expands upon that and makes you a valuable asset to people, businesses, and just the world around you once you really start to expand and make yourself more and more available and make your, um, your ability for productivity, your ability for foundation laying to be more available for others. Virgo sitting in the 10th house shows how this is gonna really manifest into what you're known for, how this can grow into an empire, how this can go from something that you just did for money and really turn into something that you are passionate about for the rest of your life. Something that's under you, run by a million different people. You're like, oh my God, how did I get here? How the fuck am I a CEO of this company? How do so many people look up to me and look at me for how to do things right? How to do things correctly? How to just get things done? Why is it that they're all looking at me for this? And you'll see your Jupiter placement has pushed you up there. You being able to utilize your Jupiter has created the, the, the mechanisms that really lock together and work together to bring you to a place of pinnacle when it comes to your career and your passions. Now with Jupiter sitting in your seventh house and Gemini as your chart ruler, you get to really see how you have the ability to kind of dance your way through life, dance your way through different relationships, dance your way through different situations, just always seeing a problem right before it comes and knowing how to move right out of the way and put yourself on a path for something a little more interesting, something a little more promising, something that might make you a little bit of quick money or might give you a little bit of quick gratification. You know how to just make those quick little moves. Now, Jupiter will expand upon that. Jupiter will expand upon you making little moves. What you want is Jupiter to expand upon your ability to make those moves become grand, make those moves actually connect and become something bigger instead of just sporadic waste of, of um, simple, quick gratification. You don't want to just go around and, and keep having fast food when it comes to your happiness, when it comes to your ability to gain, when it comes to your ability to really manifest um, connection, manifest growth, whether that be monetarily, whether that be emotionally, whether that be spiritually, whether that be intellectually. You don't want these things to be quick and easy and cheap, even though that's what you're really, really good at, getting something quick, getting something easy, and getting out of there cheap. Getting out of there not having to spend a lot and getting out of there getting the most for your buck. 
that's what you are amazing at but you're what you're going to want to do is make it connective make it turn into something bigger instead of going fast food place to fast food place why don't you go to farmers market to farmers market why don't you go supermarket to supermarket find the best deals so when you get home you can make a fantastic dinner compared to just feeding yourself everywhere you go you know what i mean how about you just shop get get everything at the best at the best price so when you get home you can create something big for everyone to share maybe people will bring their own dishes because they were able to pick up on what you did and follow what you did and and now you have a potluck now you have this 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 feast with tons of people that you enjoy tons of interesting things around you and that shit will last you can mingle around what you've created for yourself that's what jupiter is really looking to do in this placement but it's not what it is naturally inclined to do. But it is what you more than likely are searching for. That ability to turn all your little moves into one fantastic thing. But again, yeah, you just might find yourself just making a ton of little moves and surviving off of the little moves that you make. Your ability for conflict resolution, your ability to make the right connections, talk to the right people, bring the right people together. These things come naturally. These things spawn growth for you. Now, to make the most out of it is to find a reason behind it. Don't just do it for no reason. Don't just do it because it seems interesting. Why does it seem interesting? What are these people getting out of it? And why would it help you? And why would it help others to do that same thing again? Is it worth doing that same thing again? Or is it not worth trying to do it differently another time? Experiment for a reason. Try to track what it is that you were doing, not just kind of collect and collect and collect information. No, create an algorithm, create an understanding around what it is that you do and what it is that you're most interested in and what the moves that you make. Pay attention to a little bit more than the surface. Understand what is happening when you do these things and what is the long-term effect. Pay attention to the long-term effect. Stick around for some at least medium term effect so you can understand what is happening over time. Now this ties in heavily with your uh, with your influence over the world, with your impact that you have on the world that um, Jupiter as your chart ruler is um, expressing. You find Venus and you find where it is that you connect most with people, where it is that you really love the exchange, you love being able to give this thing to people just as much as you love receiving it from people. And most likely is the hidden, driven force for why you want to connect certain people. What is it that you like to see when you connect them? What is it that you fall in love with and that you wish they would fall in love with too? What is that passion and what is that feel-good energy that you are going towards? Follow your bliss and not only follow it, track it and understand what it wants. Understand what it is that you want and be able to birth that thing. Watch that thing grow and let it take care of you. Just like you took care of it. That is the the, the factory that is Venus um, energy. And when you look at Libra sitting in your 11th house, you get to see why it is a potluck. Why these small moves will connect and why keeping relations, not letting go of things for no reason, paying attention to what it is that you want, how that will help you gather it and make it something huge instead of just finding it in different places, finding it in unique ways, thinking of interesting ways to find it again for cheaper, easier, faster. You know what I mean? No, invest in it. Figure out what exactly it is. So when you connect with these people, it will last because you know what you're getting out of it and you know what you're giving them. Jupiter is a heavy gravitational energy. It attracts many people to you. Many, many, many people to you, especially sitting in Gemini in your seventh house. And these people are going to be hungry. And then there's going to be people that are willing to feed you. You're going to need to understand why some people are negative and some people are not. You're going to need to understand why you want to accept some people's food and you want to feed certain people, yet you don't want to accept other people's food and you don't want to feed certain people. And it's going to have to be below that above board sort of a, a, a interpretation dig a little deeper figure out why you want them around figure out what it is that you like about them and what it is that they like about you and find a way to exchange those things find a way to make it last with them and it's already going to be easy to do that because you're great at making connections just don't let go of that positive thing and keep building upon that positive thing with every person that you're connecting with and it will become a potluck you will be shopping at grocery stores instead of running around to all these different fast food places hopefully this analogy makes sense um but yeah that is that is the deep impact that you're going to have because that potluck that you build that 
that that environment that you create for yourself so you don't have to keep searching for food it's going to be healthy for everyone because no one's going to go hungry no one's going to not have a mouth to feed because you're going to create a social environment that is healthy and balanced and just about everyone taking care of everyone and, and so much love and so much connection even though it's just based off of interesting conversation and having fun you'll create much more than you expect with jupiter and cancer in the eighth house as your chart ruler Jupiter here actually has a, a kind of a reverse effect, um, like it would like sitting in the fourth house. We're sitting in the fourth house, you are kind of actively going out and trying to determine your comfort and trying to make sure you make moves and stay moving in directions that are healthy for you. Like I spoke about in that placement, that sort of cancer influence from the house. Now with cancer influence coming from through the sign and sitting in the eighth house, it's more about your ability to actually create comfort for others. You can actually feel very comfortable around people because you know how to keep yourself safe, you know how to protect yourself. But you don't want to intimidate people, especially with a placement like this. You want to be able to extend that comfort to others, be able to create um, a, an environment of vulnerability based on trust. And that means letting people in a little bit but also understanding that when they let you in, that is a mark of trust. They trust you enough to see their ugly, to see their bad, to see their sad, to see their good, to see their beautiful. They're letting you in. And depending on how much other Scorpio energy you have, maybe you've seen it already, but you can tell the difference between you spotting the ugly and those people letting you in to show it to you, to, to let you into their room and it, maybe it's a mess. You know what I mean? To let you into their life and maybe there's a dirty corner and they didn't try to hide it. They said, welcome. You know what I mean? Welcome to all of it. Appreciating that and being able to take that as, as um, the first action towards trust and, and to make your action equal to. And to be able to exchange that with people and appreciate that exchange with people is a very great placement for you to be able to accept that trust, accept that, and, and let Jupiter expand upon it so you can become more vulnerable, so you can feel more trusting with that person. And once you do that, you actually relax people even more. You're like a Xanax when you come into a situation. You can really calm things down and really give out a, a very strong energy of everything's okay. And it may come from a, a place where you are more in control. It may come from a place where you are just more kind of slipping in and just um, giving off that energy. Kind of more of a feminine versus masculine thing, of course, depending on other factors when you look at Pluto. Now, Jupiter is going to be helping you get gain a view on reality. Gain a view on the reality of what vulnerability means to people. Gain a view on what the reality of commitment, what the reality of love and, and luxury really means. What does that mean to have luxury? What did you have to give up? What, what does luxury really mean to you? Is it something physical or is it more something emotional? What is love to you? Now, everybody has their different definitions, and you're going to be able to see that, and you're going to disagree with a lot of them, but you're going to need to be able to accept that disagreement, accept that that's not the way that you see things, but appreciate the people that let you in to see the way that they see it, and respect them, and understand them as worthy of something, but just that something is very specific for you, and then that something is very specific for someone else, and you don't have a judgment about that, but, you know, they're good people, and being able to have that effect helps you come into newer situations and be that Xanax in even more intense situations because you're going to be the level-headed person that's seeing beyond the bullshit, that's seeing beyond the arguing and the miscommunication. You're going to be the person that understands and Jupiter will expand upon that. You understand what love means, what it takes. You understand what these things mean when you say you love someone, when you say you want to get married, when you say you want to live together. You understand what the reality of that means and the reality of what people define as love and abundance and luxury. Those are the things that kind of cancer rules over. And and you're going to have an inside look on that. And you're going to see a lot of the ugly. And you're going to see a lot of the good. And Jupiter's going to help you expand upon both. So you're going to need to be able to choose what you're going to expand upon. And make it a conscious effort to focus on the reality that matters. And focus on the reality that is practical. And focus on moving towards positive things through positive people that let you in. And joining with them. And creating more. When it comes to your impact on the world, your influence on the world, as the chart ruler really um, really shows the that that influence, that impact you can have, um, you're gonna look at Jupiter like I, you're gonna look at Pluto 
like I said, uh, to get an idea of what it is that you're really getting inside on. What does that reality look like to you? What is that reality really specified on? When it comes to love and all these different things and luxury and abundance, what is it that you are getting an inside peek on? What is your personal view? What is that, that, that realistic keen eye that you're seeing right into that is exposing the truth of that situation? And how can you accept it? How can you turn it into something that you can merge with when you see it in other people and you find it disagreeable, yet you find them and their openness agreeable? You find that you're going to want to connect with them and be a part of their home like they are accepting you into your home. Now, Jupiter is a heavy gravitational sort of energy. You will find a lot of people who come to you who are hungry. And you're going to find a lot of people who are coming to you who want to feed you. And with Scorpio sitting in the 12th house, they're going to want to feed you negative situations and they're going to want to feed off of negativity from you as well. So it's pertinent that you focus on the positive, that you move towards the positive so you can find strength and you can find power within the understanding that you develop through needing to see the negative and deciding now that I see the reality of the situation, now that I see the negative, I'm going to decide to not focus on it. I'm going to focus on the people that invite me in to see it all and who choose to, to focus on the positive just like I do. And choose to absorb what is worth absorbing and choose to give the, the gift that you have to the people that you feel deserve it and for the situations that you feel deserve it. And gain power in a way that is positive. Gain influence over people and their emotions in a way that is positive and try to collaborate emotionally with people not rule over them not dictate over them not focus on negative and just try to keep everyone away but collaborate and share power and exchange power and and see how far that can get you in in a lot of different places career-wise socially um spiritually and just plain emotionally how far that can get you and how much power you can generate through focusing on positivity and exchanging and collaborating on positivity no matter what reality that you see now for jupiter in the ninth house and leo as your chart ruler uh this is a very karmic placement um there's a great lesson that needs to be learned here uh there's gonna need to be some amount of ego death because the influence that you have is going to end up crossing many 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 generations um the 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 paths that you go down the trails that you blaze the things that you accomplish in life will more than likely get the attention that they deserve once you've collected them all, packaged them all, and then sold them. You're not going to get praise while you're doing it. Not much, not to the level that you may feel that you um, deserve. Um, hopefully that's not the case, but you know you might feel you deserve more than what you're getting right now and and just know that Jupiter's really storing up energy and the more you put yourself out there it will come to you but this is a very karmic placement meaning that it's going to need to come in the end it's going to need to come as something that is a release of the good karma that you create now you're going to need to actively do these things you're going to need to actively set out on these paths actively do something that is worth praise and collect it do it again do it a few more times. Do better than that. Try to be the best person that you can be and, and blaze the best trails that you can tra that you can blaze and go down a path that's better than the one that you were down before. And you will create a collection for people to honor and, and, and talk about. And they will pass that collection down. You will go down so many paths and you will do so much and expand yourself so much and, and expose yourself to so much and, and give yourself so much experiential knowledge that it will be able to fill a book, it will be able to fill volumes, and, and people will be able to talk about you for generations. And that what you're looking for, that glory that you feel is coming to you, may not come in this specific lifetime. It may, and it, and it may be great, and it may be something very literal. It really more depends on if you're focused on this. Um, if you're focused on something that's a little more immediate, if it really is something new that is in the public eye, then more than likely, uh, depending on where your luck has placed you to begin with, you might get that praise now and then, you know, um, create that bubble that, that kind of people will talk about it. Um, and hopefully it won't burst and people will talk about that. Hopefully it will just eventually lose all its air, fizzle out, but people will just keep talking 
write about it. Don't let it be forgotten. But more often than not, it's it's going to be something that the 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 balloon will fill up and, and, and people will notice and people won't cheer, but they will notice and they will write it down and they will they will speak of it and, and you will make it clear to people that it is happening and it will eventually fizzle out and you may feel as if, well, hey, like it was a good experience. I'll, I'll keep spreading that word and, and people eventually will keep talking about what they saw and talking about who who did it and, and, and maybe you might, your name might be lost in history. That, that ego death might have to happen, but know that it eventually will be found again. Just like in today's era, we're finding names for people that have done things that we just assumed was someone else all the time. And you would end up being one of those people that, that we may not put your name on it now, but your name will eventually go on it and you will eventually get the attention and the praise and the glory that you deserve for what you've done for us by creating something that we can lead behind something that we can that we can look up to and 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 find solace in and help us build a faith around something that you've blazed a trail down and, and you see the emphasis is being put on what you do actively with Sagittarius being on your first house and it's just that's what makes it karmic that that kind of rhythmic thing and it's the idea that what you're gonna have to put out is gonna be very Jupiterian which means it's gonna have to inflate 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 and you will get it all in the end it really has to be the end. You have to no longer be moving. You have to no longer be able to blaze those trails. And then as you're sitting in your rocking chair, Jupiter will hit you with it. Or when you're in your grave and 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 the trails have kept blazing and blazing and blazing and people kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, the new balloon just got set up. And your name and your that ego <laughs> that needed to die while you were alive will get refilled again once you're gone. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, for Jupiter on your midheaven in Virgo as your chart ruler. With Jupiter sitting on the 10th house class in Virgo, it's really like a door opener. Things get unlocked very easily for you. Um, you may find that you can kind of lead with your skills, know what, go with what you know, and, and, and make your skills available, the things that you know that you're good at, the things that you've worked hard on developing, and suddenly you're pushed out into a place that is way more pressure than you expected it's way more responsibility than you expected you kind of get end up being promoted much faster than other people because people assume based on what little information you give them what little skill you show them that you can do much more you are meant to do much more and that you are, are the one who is capable of handling these issues now this means improving the production of things in a way that is very simplistic. They, the outside world might not understand how simplistic your approach is. And that approach needs to be taking something that doesn't work and making it work. You have the ability to do that. You, you can look at Saturn and you can see what that little obsession is. What are those things that you are just obsessed with that just don't work and you hate the fact that they don't work so you develop skills surrounding around making those things that don't work that annoy you work. And when you display those skills and show people how to make something that doesn't work work, they assume you should be my supervisor, you should be my manager, you should be my, my uh, new department head, you should be my new head counselor, whatever the position may be, whatever career that you're working in, you will be put into that highest position, you will be pushed to be put in that highest position. And a lot of people will resent it, and a lot of people will really appreciate it, and a lot of people just don't know that you don't know more than what you're teaching them, but you're gonna need to rely on the fact that what you've done has gotten you here, which means that you deserve it. And that does mean that you deserve the responsibility of making yourself better and then doing it better and finding ways to improve yourself as so you can implement your same simplistic ideals to bigger and bigger situations. Just making things that don't work, work. Don't focus too much on trying to improve every situation. Make something work. Um, and that's really what you're best at. And, and Jupiter's going to expand upon the fact that others notice it. Not expand upon the fact that you're good at doing it. You're going to need to do that. You're going to need to put in the work there. That's Jupiter in an Earth sign. You're going to need to put in that work and, and make sure that your skill is there to be presented and make sure that your skill is there and it's in the right areas and it's focused on what you're most passionate about, which means you will keep doing it and keep staying passionate about doing it for people to notice it and put you in positions where you will fit and you will feel happy and feel in the right place being in that position where you can keep doing those things that you would already be doing if they didn't hire you to do it. Um, and, and focus on that. 
and Jupiter will expand upon people's ability to notice it. People, um, Jupiter will expand upon the fact that people kind of um, tether you to what your skill what your skill set is that people kind of expect you to just keep doing that thing keep being good at that thing that you're really good at it, it, it might turn into a pigeonhole sort of situation where when you start trying to show that you're good at other things too they might really build up some resentment you might really build up people that want to shackle you in a little bit but you're going to need to put yourself in a high enough position that you don't need to answer to anyone when you make the moves that you want to make and then you know you will prove that you were making things work that didn't work in different areas than they, than they expected, which is really what they wanted, but they didn't know yet. It's just really the big idea that the assumption that you were more skilled than what you've actually presented. You might be, you might not be, but it's your responsibility to keep up with that and understand that people are always gonna assume that, that you're more skilled than you seem. And understand that that's why doors kind of keep opening for you because people are expecting you to follow through and to fill the shoes that they're giving you, those really fancy, really comfortable shoes that you're gonna end up liking once you get into that business world or once you get into that higher responsibility world because it doesn't always have to be business. Now, when you look at Saturn and you look at that impact that you have in the world, you look at that, that influence that you're gonna end up having over the world, which Jupiter as your chart ruler is gonna end up showing, Saturn's gonna give you an idea of where exactly this is placed. Is it going to be something more business-like? Is it gonna be something or maybe a little bit more psychological? Is it going to be something a little bit more spiritual? Is it going to be something maybe a little bit more intellectually focused, idea focused? Um, will it be business at all? Will it be something of a mix of business and pleasure? What is it that you're obsessed with? What is it? Are those things that you just cannot stand to see not working? What are those things that you just want to make work when you see that they're not working? Why are you obsessed with them and how can you uh, present this obsession to people and then just kind of keep working on what you work on and, and just keep walking through those doors that they open for you as they assume that you can do it for their company, that you can do it for their family, that you can do it for their soul, that you can do it for something much bigger than what you assumed you were going to be doing it for in the first place. Capricorn sitting in your second house, you get to see why there's so much monetization here, why you're going to be placed in such a position where you're just going to naturally gain a lot of resources for what you're doing and people are going to be opening doors for you to just gain a lot of resources. The foundation is already laid by Saturn giving you an obsession and your obsession being focused on making things work. That foundation is laid. You're going to need to build on top of that and people are going to keep opening doors for you to build higher and higher and higher. That's what your influence is going to really uh, surround. I think you're going to need to indulge in that vibrato a little bit. You're going to need to work confidently and stand behind your skills and stand behind what it is that you know that you can do and maybe take a little risk and when people put you in a position, don't deny it. Don't try to be too humble because you're going to be denying open doors and that's just stupid <laughs> don't 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 limit yourself by humbleness don't fall into that Virgo trap of kind of using humbleness to kind of hide and not have to put themselves in positions that are too risky um, Jupiter will expand upon that and you will just find doors start to close because you're telling them to close them Jupiter in your 11th house in Libra as your chart ruler here you get to see that you are just very 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 good at taking advantage of Jupiter's heavy 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 gravitational energy you attract many different types of unique people and unique situations with unique lives with unique perspectives and you want to wear all their shoes for just a little bit just to see how it is to be them now some of these people are coming to serve to to, they're coming to help whatever it is that you want to focus on because on top of just being interested in other people you're interested in something particular about all these different people you're interested in what they're capable of what their uniqueness can do and they're interested in helping you facilitate that interest they're looking to feed your interest and then there are going to be people that are looking to be fed they're going to show up and they're going to say wow you think i'm unique you think i'm capable well tell me what to do they're going to look for you to lead them. This is a cardinal energy that Jupiter's going to be sitting in. So you're going to find the people that are going to be looking to be fed, and you're going to find the people that are looking to feed you. You're going to need to accept both, because as a natural Aquarian exchange, Aquarius understands that exchange and understands the importance of that for just the human race and, and our psyche and getting along and just not killing each other. Um, but you're going to need to learn how to take advantage understand how to create an algorithm out of what it is that you are attracting when you attract these people and you find them interesting and you find them endowed and you find them beautiful or you find their uniqueness something that you are attracted to understand that there is a give and take and that 
you know that you're feeding them in some way with the with what you're bringing to the table you know very well what, what skills and assets you bring to the table but you're going to need to know what it is that they're giving you and why you want it and what's possible and experiment with those things and and they'll be open but understand that there are going to be some people you don't want to feed you and there's a reason for that and there are going to be some people that you do want to feed you and there's a reason for that as well and there's a reason that you don't want to feed certain people and there's a reason why you don't want I mean you do want to feed other people and you're going to need to take that information and do something with it not just kind of let it be what it is create an algorithm create a system understand what it is that you're trying to do understand what possibilities you are most interested in and then find a way to turn that into something bigger and understand that those people who want to help feed you will help feed that something bigger so it's not as much as a struggle and those people that are looking to be fed will be fed and it won't be a struggle to feed them because you have abundance from the people that are feeding you and it's all going to end up being positive it's all going to end up being something that you enjoy because you're going to find ways to interpret who you want to interact with and who you don't hopefully that's what this jupiter will expand upon that's what jupiter wants to expand upon your ability to relate judge relations and continue down paths that seem positive based on your judgment this connects heavily with that bigger influence that bigger impact that you're going to have on the world in general as Jupiter as your chart ruler uh, shows because your ability to choose your ability to create something your ability to to kind of create sparks be an alchemist of social situations um, an, an alchemist means knowledge knowing what it is that you're mixing knowing how and what you're trying to do knowing what what kind of chemicals and what kind of compounds you want to make when you put these things together being able to do that will create that impact that you have on the world because eventually you will get it right eventually you will get exactly what mixture you want and you will create this sort of social uh really macrocosm type of social impact that's going to last and it's going to change how people interact in general in our world based off of what you've been mixing together in your little uh, social labs um you look at uranus and, and you get to see what it is that you're most interested in what type of potential what kind of uh, chemicals you like to work with most when you look at people and why you're attracted to them and why you're not and why they're attracted to you and why they're not and being able to look at that with the scientific eye um, pull emotions out of it which isn't really that hard with this super replacement and deal with things and, and be able to deal with something might blow up in your face when you put these certain chemicals together and something might not if you put other chemicals together and being able to, and willing to, to mix those things and being able to define what those things are you will help you do that then when you find um, Aquarius sitting in the third house, you find that that natural ability for you to kind of take people, situations, acquaintances, friends, all these different uh, delineations of, of these relationships and your ability to actually create a chemistry set within with this Aquarius sitting in your third house. You actually do see interactions with people a little uh, coolly, a little coldly, and you can kind of look at people and decide what chemical they represent and, and what they might or might not do when they mix with other things and if you can really create a list of what these people look like what they are and, and how they work together and why you like them why you are attracted to them keeping that Venusian quality that Libra has to let, help Jupiter expand upon positivity instead of cold distant negativity you can really create something good create something amazing that's gonna be definitely unexpected but of your own hands now, lastly, with Jupiter and Scorpio in the 12th house as your chart ruler, um, with Jupiter placed here, you can actually gain a very bad reputation of being sneaky or trying to incriminate people because you have a knack for wanting to or being very good at secretly recording some of the most intense moments in other people's lives. Now, this can be intensely negative, this can be intensely positive, or this can just be intense communication, whatever it is that you're really focused on. Um, seeing where Neptune is placed will really kind of get you to see what it is that you're really trying to create, what kind of vision you're trying to create, what kind of collage you're making with these intense moments. But um, you have a knack for wanting them, to wanting to secretly record them, wanting to be able to play them back for yourself later and learn lessons from everyone else around you instead of having to learn them firsthand. You kind of want to create a little space for yourself to view reality from other people's perspectives without yet you having to go outside and get hurt like they did. 
Now, you will eventually learn that if you're doing this in a negative way, you're just never going to move and people really are going to see you as sneaky and manipulative and a user and incriminating. And if you move this more towards a positive way, people are really going to just see you as someone who is very vigilant. Someone who's interested in how people develop strength. So you can go and develop your own strength. So you can map out a world and feel as if you have some type of control over the direction that you're going. And when you run into situations, you are able to define them by other people's experiences and deal with them for yourself. Instead of looking for people to go through hardships for you, expecting that you will never have hardships of your own because you just won't do what they do. But you will never run out of people, you will never run out of hardships, and you will never get outside of your front door and never get out into the real world if you constantly are looking at other people's experiences to tell you what not to do. Um, that's that key difference that will make this something negative or something positive. Jupiter is a very heavily uh, uh, gravitational energy. You will attract a lot of people. This is 12th house energy. You will attract tons and tons of people who are ready and willing to give you negative situations, who are ready and willing to give you misfortunate situations, misfortunate happenstances. Now, you're going to need to be able to, to separate for yourself the people who are coming to give you this these misfortunate happenstances because it is a happenstance in itself, and you're going to watch somebody bounce back and, and, and separate them from those people who are coming to give you misfortune so they can share it with you, so they can share fear with you, so they can share negativity with you. That's going to be the key difference between the people that are coming to feed you that you want to accept and the people that are coming to feed you that you are not going to want to accept. Now, you're going to also want to feed others because that's just the way life works. It's give and take. That means being able to take someone's experience, be able to see how they bounce back, and then go out and take courage from what you saw. Take courage from their misfortune and say, I will be able to recognize it, recognize this problem if it comes my way, and I will have a, a better idea of how to deal with this, actually planning on dealing with this when I have to. That's a way for you to give back because you're showing people that they left an effect on you. You're going to want to keep those people around because you guys can now share this experience. You can share the growth that you've made. You guys can grow together because you are taking on their experiences, learning from them, empowering them, and showing them how their strength made you strong. And you guys can keep moving, and you can keep moving, and it becomes a mutually beneficial sort of negative experience that got turned into a positive. That's the people that you're going to want to feed in return by doing so. The people you're not going to want to feed in return are the people that you're going to want to hide with, the people that you're going to want to keep avoiding misfortunate situations because they keep coming up and we are such victims, aren't we? And isn't it horrible that these things happen and you guys just keep comparing how the little bit better of a life that, that you have or they have just makes everything better for them and everything worse for you and just exchanging very negative things and giving back to them and feeding them as well, but just feeding them negativity that they fed you and creating a... a, a a symbiotic relationship that is just built off of negativity, fear, and, and, and non-movement. That's how you're going to want to separate the people that you're going to want to feed and that you're going to want to feed you and the people that you do not want to feed and that uh, you do not want feeding you. And it's much easier said than done, but it, it's a necessity if you want to be able to, again, get outside of your front door, experience life, and, and get into it. And, and, and not be spiritually, intellectually, uh, uh, monetarily or physically or just um, emotionally lazy. Don't use people to trap yourself, to play a victim. Don't use people's negative experiences to exchange more negativity and to, and to produce more fear. Neptune will show you where, where you can become very lazy in that place and forget what the point is. And the point is to find people you do want to exchange with. Find the people that do find strength. Find the people that help you map out this very confusing world, not help you hide from it. Finding where Neptune's place, finding what house it's in will help you understand where these, where you can find these people and what world you might be trying to map out. Influence on the world is actually gonna be solely personal. 
because you're being able to find these people and being able to find this map means that you're going to be able to go down certain paths and utilize your personal power bring the personal power that that scorpio represents and pull that into your ascendant and make your own chart whole this is a very personal impact the world is going to have a very personal impact on you the world is going to have a very influential impact on you it's the reverse of all these other placements i've talked about so far and, and it's going to produce great 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 power in you and great great possibility in what it is that you have to offer and jupiter will expand upon that this, this is drifted towards something positive because that map will come in handy Pisces being in the fourth house, it kind of accentuates that idea that it's something personal. You're going to need to work on finding your comfort place, finding your comfort zone, so you can keep moving through the torrents, like I explained. And um, with Pisces, fourth house, that be that ability to keep moving and in smooth directions, and understanding that things get turbulent when you decide to change direction for either a negative or positive situation, it will get turbulent and chaotic and confusing either way. But on one hand, you can have a map to help figure things out after that and keep moving in the direction you want. Or you can not have a map and just have a pity party with negative people. <laughs> but um, yeah, that is it. That is Jupiter as the chart ruler through the houses. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm going to be recording the rest of these and putting them out um, a lot more frequently. And um, yeah, I look forward to it and hopefully you guys too thanks for watching make sure to like this video if you like it share it if you like me and uh subscribe if you haven't already and uh, make sure to keep up with these videos because you never know if i'll be talking about you next i'm tired barkley i am tired no i'm not but i mean i don't know you know bark get out of here <laughs> oh my god I think, oh shit, I am tired.